Welcome to Best Practices for Eagle Vision Instructors. If you recognize the preceding music, you know that's the famous Tonight Show theme from The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson, who was recently named the number one TV icon of all time. Well, in a lot of ways, working with Eagle Vision is doing television. Just like the very best podcasts being produced for education today are like well-produced radio shows. A well-done Eagle Vision class is going to have a lot in common with a good television program. So we're going to try and learn some lessons from the King of Late Night and from other educational institutions on how to do an excellent job giving a class over this exciting new medium of Eagle Vision. So let's take a moment and look at a couple of these learning objectives. First, we want you to understand Eagle Vision as being educational, interactive television. We want you to understand that the skills of being an Eagle Vision leader are very much like those of being a television host and moderator. We want you to be aware of the verbal and nonverbal communication skills that directly relate to video, and also want you to be aware of the monitoring skills that you have to perform while you're giving an Eagle Vision class. So just as Johnny had to take cues from his director, you'll have to learn how to take cues from your class to be a good Eagle Vision instructor. Now, there are a couple of examples right here in the state of Florida where educational television has been used to great effect. The Florida State University School of Nursing used interactive two-way television to link the main campus in Tallahassee with the branch campus in Panama City so that one instructor could serve two classrooms, very similar to one of the models for using Eagle Vision here at Embry-Riddle. The University of Florida School of Pharmacy used educational television, web conferencing format such as this, in order to link cohorts around the state. One of the hallmarks of the UF program was they had a facilitator at every remote location. Just as here at Embry-Riddle, we want you to have someone downstream, a local director of academics, another staff member, or perhaps even a trained student who can assist you in maintaining the downrange part of your Eagle Vision class. But let's talk further about this idea of being a television host and moderator. As you may know from online instruction, our role as a modern instructor is to be more of a facilitator and moderator, not a one-way lecturer. So some of the skills that a television host uses will apply to you as a good Eagle Vision instructor. First remember, television is an intimate medium. When speaking over video, you're not speaking to millions and millions of people at home. You're speaking to the camera operator and your director. Or in your case, as an Eagle Vision instructor, you're speaking to the students in your classroom. So our goal as an Eagle Vision instructor, while you are being asked to be a performer, we're not asking you to be an orator. We're asking you to have a conversation with the people in your room because this is a small-scale medium, no matter how big the technology may be. We also want you to remember that it's important that you draw out your audience. So as you have interaction with the students in your classroom and in the classroom that is connected to you by Eagle Vision, you're trying to draw energy, feedback, and information out of the participants in those locations. Now, how can you do a good job as a speaker? Well, Johnny used to do one of his desk bits where he was Karnak the Magnificent, the seer, sage, and soothsayer. So I'll try and replicate that and give you the answer to this question, never before having seen the question. And the answer is tone, volume, and rate. Tone, volume, and rate. What are three ways you can control your voice? I never promised it would be funny. But tone, volume, and rate are the three adjustments that you can make in your speaking style to be effective on video. In terms of tone, you want to have a lighter tone when you're going over positive, happy information. And you want to have a slightly lower tone, slightly darker voice, when you're going over negative information, when you're going over questions that people got wrong on the last test, then your voice should go down. 
When you're saying that you're pleased with everyone's performance on the last exercise, the tone of your voice should come up and you connote the proper information and emotion that goes with what you're trying to say. In terms of your volume, we are accustomed to having the volume be a little bit stronger at the beginning of a piece of information. And then as that information works its way to its conclusion, your volume sort of comes down. Then it comes up again when you start the next point. In this way, you can use your voice as a punctuation mark. It can be difficult for people to follow along with your lecture or discussion or presentation over video if you don't use punctuation with your voice. So let your volume go up at the beginning of a new piece of information, let it trail off to the end, and then pick up again when something new happens. The third control that you can manage is your rate of speech. If we're going over information that we think everyone knows, that Embry-Riddle University has residential campuses in Daytona and at Prescott, Arizona, and over 130 teaching centers around the world, we can say that somewhat quickly because that's information that we think everyone will be familiar with. But if we want to start listing those teaching centers and naming names, we should slow down so that people have a chance to absorb that information. People will not think that you're dull-witted, they'll think that you're courteous because you're giving them time to absorb the information and to make note of it if they want to on their paper. So when you're conveying information that's part of a review, you might go a little bit quicker, but when you're presenting information for the very first time, you probably should slow down. Now, since we're talking about Eagle Vision being an interactive medium, sometimes you will get questions from your local classroom or from your remote classroom. And sometimes those questions are not very good. So we talk about responding to negative questions effectively. Now, in this case, we don't mean negative to connote that the student is challenging your authority as the instructor. I mean a negative question in that the student clearly does not understand the material. So the student asks you about Germany being on our side in World War II. You have to respond to this effectively and courteously and be thinking on your feet. There's a three-step formula that allows you to deal with the negative situation of a student asking you something that is so obviously wrong. Step one, you have to directly answer the negative part of that question. No, Germany was not one of the Allies in World War II. Then step two, make a transition. However, Germany is now a U.S. ally in NATO. Then step three, you end on a positive note. In fact, the end of World War II set the stage for NATO. Let's look at that. So what happens is you received something that was potentially negative, a very wrong-headed question from one of your students. But using this three-step formula, you're able to answer the part that was negative, the part that was incorrect, make a smooth transition, and then still wind up on a positive teaching point that led you back to the lecture or presentation that you wanted to make all along. But even things that don't have to do with your voice are part of your presentation as an Eagle Vision instructor. We want you to manage your body language effectively. First, limit your hand gestures. Most of the time, the shot that you're in is going to be very tight. So large sweeping arm gestures will not wind up on camera. Instead, keep your gestures small and with, within the television frame. Remember, television is an intimate medium. So we don't want to be wildly demonstrative in something that's a very small screen. Stand or sit up straight as much as you can. This will do a couple of things for you. Not only will this improve your breathing, It'll align all of your breathing mechanisms so that you will speak better, that you will enunciate more clearly. It'll also give more of an air of confidence in your presentation. So if you're hunched over your podium, not only do you look unsure of yourself, but you are compressing your breathing apparatus and it will be a more fatiguing presentation for you. 
look to your students and not so much to the camera. It's very tempting for us to want to watch the camera, the cyclopean eye that draws us into giving our presentation. But you want to be interacting with the live people who are in your room. You may want to smile from time to time as it's appropriate. When someone asks a good question, you should smile because your students are understanding your material. That should make you happy, should be reflected in your face, and that gives positive feedback to your students when they're getting things right. The last thing I want to talk about today is how you monitor your own television host behavior, how you manage your particular medium. One of the things you have to do is be continuously scanning your audience and your technology because this provides feedback to you as an instructor and moderator of your program. You don't want to be watching yourself. And it's very tempting for me, even right now, to be trying to see myself over here on the monitor and take a look at how I'm doing. But that would be me relating with myself and not me relating with you, the audience, or the people in my classroom. So we want to teach you some eye patterns that will help you be effective. Think back to when you were in high school and you were taking driver's education. Your driver's education instructor taught you an eye pattern for looking about your driving area, for you to pick up your rear view mirrors, your instrument panel, the windshield, and then continually working that pattern. So as a driver, we want you to check the left rear view mirror, the windshield, center rear view mirror, back to the windshield, and so on as you look around the cockpit of your car. Speaking of cockpits, as a pilot, and many of you are, you know that there's a necessary eye pattern that you had to perform in order to continuously scan your instrument panel, your heads-up display, and out the cockpit. So you also had an eye pattern that was trained into you to be effective in flying. In my native field of the newspaper business, there's also an eye pattern that we know newspaper readers use. We called it the Lazy Seven, where readers would start at the top left of the page, pick up the main headline, work their way down a supporting story, and then down to the little boxes on the bottom of the page where the weather and horoscope and such might be located. So we know that there was a typical eye pattern for newspaper readers. Well, now you see a screenshot of an actual Eagle Vision class, fully formed where you can see down the left-hand side the participants at the remote sites. You can see the file menu that is set up for uh, information to be presented during the class, the main whiteboard screen where a function is being graphed, and then the small video windows that indicate the various Eagle Vision locations participating in this class. As an instructor, you need to make a quick oval sweep of your Eagle Vision screen in order to effectively check your main content area, which in this case would be the whiteboard where the function is being graphed, check your remote centers, the small video windows across the bottom, check your host site yourself to make sure that you're still on the air, Check your file menu to be thinking ahead of what slideshow or document you want to portray next. Take a look at your left-hand upper area, which shows your responders. So you can be looking for check marks indicating assent to a poll, or you can look for the little hand icon to let you know there's a question coming in from the field, and repeat this scanning pattern. As you work with Eagle Vision more, your eyes will become accustomed to making this oval sweep of the Eagle Vision screen that will help you stay in touch with your audience, your material, and yourself. I hope this presentation helps you to go out there and be an excellent instructor with the exciting new medium of Eagle Vision here at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>